As I was saying in the last increment, this is about 604, 603, 604 AD, covering the Christians. And this is 12 years earlier, 592, 591, 592. Same text, 12 year difference. Why? This is applying to the Jews. All right. 591, 591, 592 AD. The text um, syllable is 561 and 562. You have to add 30 to it. And here, obviously, the, the text is syllable 573, 574, and you add 30 to it. The reason for this is because the um, Persian Wars, the Byzantine Persian Wars, are going to keep on going. And so it's like, it, it's tribulation quality. Okay, you've got <clears throat> Persia and the Byzantine Empire, what was left of it, which was very much smaller at this point, it, re it reached its widest extent um, from Byzantium, which, you know, we, uh, we call today Istanbul, because the empire had already split, the Roman Empire had already split. It reached its widest point hitting Persia in 555. And the, really what had happened was um, Justinian was trying to pay a tribute and the Persians rebelled against um, them, themselves, against their own Suzerzang, um, also against the Byzantines who were actually sending tribute to the Persians so that the Persians wouldn't invade Byzantium, and, and, and the result was a kind of a battle, and as a result of the battle, Justinian actually took some territory, but he really didn't have the wherewithal to keep on, to keep the territory, so he basically finished giving the tribute, they got it back, and he finished giving the tribute to the Persians, and the Persians pretty much just said, okay, fine, we'll be at peace. And then after the Byzantines left, the Persians just took over the territory again. Okay? So if you're living in that territory, and you're a Christian or a Jew, neither of these guys are really your friends. Okay? You don't want to be there. They're all going to be imposing taxes anyway. And it's one guy imposing taxes, and then they overrun your area, and then you lose everything. And then another guy is imposing taxes, and you lose everything. So it's like, get out. That's why Uai is so well placed here. For the Jews, it occurs 12 years earlier. But, and this has been a trend of history too, the Jews keep thinking, oh, well, it's our land. It was given to us by God, yada, yada. And they ignore all the warnings in the Old Testament, telling them, like in Daniel 9, when you see the abomination, get out. There's nothing in the Old Testament telling you to come back on your own. In fact, what is said instead is you just wait until God brings you back. But, you know, people don't listen. All right? They don't listen. So they come back on their own and they claim, well, you know, God allowed us back and they thank God for it and everything. Well, that's a good thing, but God didn't tell you to come back. You're not supposed to come back to the second advent. And of course, Israel's been constantly trying to come back. And of course, there's now a state there. And technically, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have done that. But when you stop to look at the history of it, it's like, where else are they going to go? Everywhere they go, they're persecuted. So, you know, you had the Balfour Declaration in 1905. And now Israel's sudden, you know, finally a state. And it's been a troubled area ever since. She's surrounded by her Arab enemies. Okay? That doesn't mean that we should not support Israel. We should die for her if necessary. A whole, uh, any Christian who's a real Christian, I mean, you know, you can be saved, at, but if you subscribe to the Christian, you know, doctrine, which is in the Bible only, then you need to be a fan of Israel to, you know, defend her life. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that you go against your own country to do that, but at the same time, it does mean that U.S. foreign policy ought to be friendly to Israel, and of course it is. 
So at least we got that much in common no matter where we are denominationally. And until that happened, though, the Byzantines were persecuting the Jews just as much as the Persians were. Actually, the Byzantines were worse. And that's what this period is recording. So I'm going to have you look at that. i got to turn something on the stove for a minute. So people are going to be there anyhow. And if you're there as a Jew and you knew how to count your syllables, frankly, you wouldn't be there. But if you learned how to count them later, or you learned how to count them during, this would be, be your warning. And then you go, oh, I got to get out. Yeah. But let's say you still didn't. Let's say you're in the middle of it, and now you're finally learning to count your syllables and use this as a timeline. So what does it tell you is going to happen? Okay, for the Jew, 591, 592, total is 24 syllables. And that takes you up to 615 A.D. Real important. Here, for the Christian... This is 604, 603, 604, and that's 23 syllables. So that takes you to what? Six, five, 595 plus 30. Okay, and 595 plus 30 is 625 AD. So again, we have a little, a little distinction. This is 6.15 and this is 6.25. Why that difference? Well, when you go look at history, what you find out, going back down here to Matthew in the lower window, all the way at the end, we're talking about Tite Hamerites. Those days end at 6.15 A.D. And in 6.15 A.D., the Persians win again versus the Byzantines. And this text is telling you to get out, all right? Just get out. Yeah, because this is where the battle is the hottest, is, is in the Jerusalem area. And it ends in 614, but 615 is beginning, you know, the new ruler. And the new ruler at this point, at the rise, is... Persia. What actually happened in history, telling you that the Jews weren't paying attention to the Meter, because they didn't even believe Jesus was the Christ, what happens in history in 615 is that the Jews who were there in the land petitioned the Persian government to give them autonomy, which the Persian government did. And that lasted right up until here. Next 15 years. During this last part, in the middle of Hamon, Humon, you, like the Jews who were there, the Byzantines won over the Persians again at 629 A.D. So the Byzantines took it back over, so any Jews who were left there with their autonomy lost it. And then they were persecuted again once the Byzantines took over. Okay, so it's like, you know, Sabbath, your rest, time ended. And now we have, because this is 24, we have nine more syllables starting right here. Well, leave out Hamon, just the last syllable of Hamon, all the way to the end of Sabatoi. And those next nine years are controlled by the Byzantines again. And it is tribulation quality. But what happens? What happens is that our boys, the new Muslims, 
come in and take over. And during the rest period, this is really satire, baby. During the so-called Sabbath, that's when they take over the Byzantines. And they're now the rulers of Jerusalem again. And the time is, the battle was 636-637, Sabbatos three syllables, okay? By 638, because remember we started here at 561, so now we're going to add 48 to it. So 48 plus 560 plus 30, because it's after his death, total is 638. So this syllable, the, the toy in Sabatoy, the rest is 638. At this point, the Muslims take over. And as you hopefully know by now, Islam is not friendly to Judaism. It's not friendly to the Jews. The Quran says that the Jews are, that the Jews should be killed, that they're scum. That's what the Quran says, and that's why the terrorists, who are terrorists in, in the Middle East now, that's what they're trying to do, is bring about the, you know, takeover of Islam yet again. This was the first time it happened in Jerusalem. 638 is, you know, Beginning of 638 A.D. is when the Muslims basically moved in. The Muslims were granted by the Byzantines as part of the treaty between the Muslims and the Byzantines. That Omar I, who was the guy who conquered them, could construct over the Holy of Holies which he saw in a vision, David praying on the rock, which of course David did pray at the end of Second Samuel. They could build their own church, and that's exactly what they did. So the abomination you saw up here, belonging to 491 and following, because it was an ongoing project, gets replaced by a different abomination now, it doesn't start its construction exactly. I mean, he builds a wooden mosque over it, a small one. But what you see in everyday TV, when you see a shot of Jerusalem, you see this golden onion-shaped dome. That's what was treated away from the Christians to the Muslims at that point. And that the initial mosque that was put there was wooden, and that was later replaced between 685 and 691 A.D. with what is called today the Dome of the Rock, and that's what you see in every newscast that shows you a shot of Jerusalem. And I'll let you think about that while I go turn whatever it is I'm cooking. That Dome of the Rock, which was originally a wooden mosque, built over the Holy of Holies, what's called the Petra in the Old Testament, the same name Christ used for himself in Matthew 16, 18, has nothing whatsoever to do with Peter. That same abomination is now Muslim. The Muslims have in their culture, because it's in the Quran, the idea that, well, Islam, first of all, means surrender at the point of a knife, and you therefore say the Shahada that you, I'm not even going to say it out loud, basically that you believe that Muhammad is the prophet, okay? And that makes you a Muslim. If you won't do that, you have to pay, and I want to say it was 20% income tax, and for that you got the privilege to live. You got no other privileges. Your testimony in court meant nothing. Of course, 
you know, the Muslims basically stole all their laws from the Byzantines because that was already pretty much true under Byzantine law. Okay, um, you couldn't proselytize, you couldn't marry a, a Muslim unless you converted. They had all these really nasty laws. And some of them were so bad, if a bunch of Muslims were walking down the street and you're walking on the same side of the street and they decide to push you and steal everything you've got on your hands, you can't go to court. You can't, you have no redress. If they decide they just want to punch you when they see you on the street or just wanted to walk into your house and take something, they could do that and you couldn't get any redress. In other words, you're paying 20% a year just to live. And you're still subject to any individual Muslim who wanted to just mess with you. Okay? That were, that, those were the conditions. So see, you need a Sabbath rest. See Sabbath. You need a Sabbath rest and you need to get out of there right away. And you had all this warning going back to 591 AD if you knew your syllable. Actually, you had your warning going even back farther than that. All the way back up here. Where was it? Uh, right here. The Christian warning and the and the Jewish warning first began back up here in 491 A.D. when you start to see the abomination being built. You should have just gotten out of Dodge, don't come back, because the text never says it's okay to come back. All right, but if you didn't listen, get out now. Okay. Now, just in case you missed that, then there will be tribulation. And this word, Merale, needs to be back on 21a. This whole total should be 10 syllables, not 7. Because you're supposed to break the text by clauses. Okay? But 7 is the number of tribulation. And so when Anno Nominon was, you know, parsing it, he decided, well, I'll put the Megali next. But the Megali belongs to Slipsis. You can't just throw it on the next line. Okay? Otherwise, you don't get the real pattern that they're trying to show. So, okay, from 638 until the next 10 years, because Mejale is three syllables, all right, 638 until 648, it's going to be especially bad. So don't be there, okay? It's going to be so bad, it's worse than it's ever been and will ever be again. Now, that applies to the actual final tribulation. So how is it that that phrase applies to that period also, since it says never will be again? And I'll cover that in the next increment.